Do you want your drums to sound like this? Or maybe you're looking to make them a little bit more jazzy. What about soulful, groovy, boom bap? any of those breaks piqued your interest make sure you stick around for this whole video because i'll be showing you guys how i got those grooves and how i use addictive drums too to get the drums to sound exactly how i want it so the first thing you gotta do is choose a preset and a kit the three kits that i have are modern soul and r&b vintage dry and funk now that doesn't mean that they're the best ones out there there's a bunch of different presets that you can get. These were just the ones that I felt like suited my needs. So when I'm choosing a kit, I'm usually listening for two things, the tone of the kick and the snare. So that'll go something like this. I'll just play through all the kits until I find one that I like. Now this one sounds pretty cool. It's named Got Soul and I'll keep it in mind. This is another one that sounds pretty cool. So I'll probably just go with this just to save some time. After you got your kit, go ahead and look through the individual drums. And what I usually like to do is unlink any of the drums that are linked up. So as you can see, this simple right here is orange. This one is also orange. That means these two drum sounds are linked together. So whenever I press the kick, this flexi two will play. So let's go ahead and unlink that. Now we just have the kick playing. Right off the bat, I know that this kick is way too low. That was a Mustang. So whenever you're manipulating the drums, it's important to make sure that you take it one drum at a time. That means start with the kick, then go to the snare, then go to the hi-hat and the cymbals and so on and so forth. The reason why I suggest doing that is because you'll be jumping back and forth between the different drum sounds. Ultimately, you want to be too organized and you might just be wasting a lot of time. So tinker down one drum, then move on to the next and then play them all together at the same time. And if you notice that some things need to be changed around, just do some final touches and you should be good. So let's start off with the kick. Right off the bat, this kick drum is way too loud. So I'm going to go over here and turn it down. Sounds a lot better to me. Next, I really don't like for my kicks to have any uh, overhead mic sounds coming in. So I usually like to just turn the overhead mic level all the way down because that's going to make the kick drum sound a little bit more stereo. And I like for my kicks to be in the center of the mix uh, of my beats. That sounds a lot better. Up next, we have room level. I can also turn this down. So after turning down the overhead mic and the room level, my kick drum sounds pretty mono. Now you might hear some reverb and that's because this kit actually has some effects on it. So let's go ahead and turn this off so we can turn off the effects. Going back to the kick, now our kick drum should be completely mono. That sounds a lot better. So what can I do to change this kick? What can I do to make it sound better? Or more specifically, what can I do to make it fit my needs. I usually like to have my kicks a little bit lower pitched. Somewhere like that. And I also like them to be a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and activate the volume envelope. Join that down and make it a smooth transition. Another thing that we can do is we can take this little finger right here and take it all the way down. That's going to allow the lower frequencies to pass through as well, not just these mids. But usually I would turn this down as well because I usually like for my kicks to just be comprised of mostly lower end frequencies. I don't really like when there's too much air in my kick drums. So what I tend to do is just take this and drag it down to about four to 300. And that's a range I'm comfortable leaving my kicks at. So up next and up next, we have the mic positioning. So I can have it all the way to the right, which is towards the front of the drum or all the way to the left, 
which is near the beater. With this kick drum, I would like for it to hit a little bit harder, so I'm gonna place it towards the front. All right, and that's exactly the sound I'm looking for. It's hitting pretty hard, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower this EQ right here because I noticed that it's just it's raised a lot, so. There we go, sounds perfect now. Last up for the kick drum, we're gonna just manipulate the compressor. You notice when I lower the threshold, it sounds like it starts peaking. We don't really want that. It's not the sound that we're going for. And we also have some distortion going on to it. Let's just see if we can change this around and make it sound any better. The main three that I use is air pressure, our air pressure, crunch, and let's see, tube pair. For this one, I might go with air pressure. That does take some of the bass out, so let's go ahead and add a little bit. A little bit back. There we go. And you might hear some air springs. And that's actually the snares uh, that are at the bottom of the snares, snare buzz. So we can also manipulate that by going to the snare tab and dragging this uh, is the left or right? All the way to the right being the loudest, all the way to the left being off, basically. So depending on if you, if you want that, you can add it. Some people like it, some people don't. Personally, I like snare buzz, so I'm gonna add a little bit. I think that's a nice touch. And that's pretty much it for the kick drum. Since we're already on the snare tab, let's go ahead and get started on that. So let's see how it sounds. All right. So off the bat, it's pretty loud. So we turn this down just a little bit, not too much though. The pitch is pretty good. So the overhead and the room mics are pretty good. We don't wanna turn those down all the way because it'll make your snare sound mono. Unless that's the sound that you're going for, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So what I like to do is at least leave it at zero decibels or more, just so that snare can spread out throughout the mix. Going on to the volume envelope, sometimes I like my snares to be really tight. For this one, I might make it a little bit longer, just like that. The pitch is good, so I don't have to worry about that, and the cut range is pretty cool. So impression, we just lower the threshold just a little bit. And let's add some distortion, so. I'm not really feeling none of them, so I'm just gonna leave them off and just leave it like that. We don't really have to EQ the drum at all. And actually, let's turn this kick up a little bit. And I noticed that the the mono tracks down here are also turned down, so we can also turn that up for a little bit of extra volume. All right, nice. So moving back to the snare, since this mono track is turned all the way down, let's just see what happens when we turn it up. It might sound better. I kind of like the way it sounds when I added it, so I'm gonna leave it on. Going over to the hi-hat, it's gonna be pretty quick. With the hi-hats, I like to just leave all the high frequencies coming through and turn it off towards the mid. We don't really want too much bass coming from the hi-hat, so I like to just cut that those frequencies out. Overhead mics, they can be turned up. I like for my hi-hats to spread out throughout the mix, as well as the uh, room level mics. But while we're at it, I don't really like the way this uh, hi-hat sounds, so let's go through the different ones that we have. All right, I'm feeling that one, so I might just leave it. So now we have the most basic sounds of a drum kit. The hi-hat, the snare, and the kick drum. All right, so the drums are sounding pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a pattern going. All right, so whenever you're programming some drums and you want them to sound realistic, it's really important that you play the drums by hand. Now that's if you want them to sound realistic. The reason why you wanna refrain from clicking the drums in is because it'll make the drums sound a little bit too consistent and robotic because it'll leave out some of the good imperfections and human timing errors that naturally occur. 
So what I like to do is just finger drum a pattern, record it, and if anything needs to be changed or something just doesn't sound right, then I'll go in and change it up. So let's go ahead and try to get something. One thing that I like to do a lot is start off simple and then add on to it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit this button and let's see if we got a good one. So as you can see, we were just playing the same pattern for a pretty long time. Let's see, uh, go to a random spot and see what it sounds like. All right, not too bad. It's not really much happening there, but it's a process. What I like to do is just listen for any imperfections if it sounds just way too off, I'll go ahead and change it. So let's just go ahead and listen to it with a metronome on. All right, so I noticed that this kick drum and this kick drum were way too off. Also, this hi-hat is a little bit too far to the right. So is a few of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move just a few of them slightly over just to make sure that timing doesn't get a little bit too wacky. Hi-hats are sounding good, the snare is sounding good, and the kick is sounding good. Now, what I like to do is add some ghost notes. Ghost notes are really important because they add spice to your drums. So I'll start with the kick, then go to the snare, and after that, if I feel like it's too many ghost notes, I'll start subtracting some of them out. All right, those are sounding pretty good. Let's go ahead and lower some of the velocities of these ghost notes because you typically don't want your ghost notes to be too loud, uh, preferably quieter than the, uh, the main notes that carry the groove. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the snare. Now with the snare, I usually don't use the same snare sound as the snare that's on the two and the four. Sometimes I use a snare that sounds a little bit more shallow. So here on Addictive Drums, you can open up a map window and you can see right around here, there's a, a sound called a snare shallow hit and then you have snare open hit. Can you hear the difference? So the one that sounds a little bit more shallow, that's the one that I typically use for the ghost notes, just because I feel like it sounds better and it's not really out there too much like the main snare. All right, so that sounds pretty good to me. I don't really want to overdo it with the sounds. I don't want it to be too chaotic with the drum pattern. So adding two notes is good enough. I might just take them out later. Now that we have some ghost notes for the kick and the snare drum, let's go ahead and start thinking about ride cymbals and open hi-hats. So let's just listen, play along, and see if there's any spots where we can add some ride cymbals and open hi-hats. So we got some right there. Now notice how I played those riot cymbals, pretty quiet. Velocities are very important when you want your drums to sound good and realistic. Not every drum is gonna be played at the same velocity. Not every drum is gonna be played as hard as it can be played. And not every drum is gonna be played at the most quiet level that it can possibly be played at. So. It's really to, important to keep in mind the velocities. We don't want this riot cymbal to be overpowering the other drums. So what, what do we do? We play quiet and kind of in the background. Next up, let's go over to some open hi-hats. All right. So what I like to do with the open hi-hats, whenever there's a spot that I notice that it can be at, I remove the closed hi-hat because I don't want that hi-hat to accidentally close it or it's just going to sound too weird if 
the hi-hats play way too fast. It's not going to sound realistic. So I just take that hi-hat away. Now let's go ahead and take away this uh, ghost snare. I might add a uh, ghost note for the kick drum. Just like that. All right, so that drum pattern sounds pretty good now. One last thing that I like to do with the drum patterns is check out the pitch. So there might be a few sounds that I can pitch up or pitch down that might make the drum sound just a little bit better. The two drums that I usually pitch down or pitch up after getting the pattern set are the ride cymbal and the hi-hats. So I feel like the hi-hats are at a good spot, but the ride cymbal... It could be at a lower pitch and it'll sound a little bit better, I think. So let's go ahead and see. Yeah. I feel like that adds a little bit more soul and uh, flavor to the beat. So now that we got everything, let's just play some chords over it and see if it sounds good. That sounds pretty good. The only thing that I would change is pretty much the ride symbol. I feel like this pattern gets a little bit repetitive. So I'll probably just make the pattern four bars and change up that ride symbol. And probably add a few different ghost notes just to give the drum pattern a little bit more variety. Now variety is very important because you don't want your drums to get boring over the beat. Remember, your song could be playing for one to two to three minutes long and you don't want the same exact theme playing over and over again so one trick one last thing that i would like to show you guys is to add some fills okay so add some tom drums add some snare rolls uh just to give some excitement and a little bit of unpredictability in your drum pattern so one way that i like to do that is by first off let's make it at least four bars and we can copy and paste the uh, first two. So let's go ahead and delete all this stuff because we don't know what that is. Go ahead and duplicate, Command D. And then let's turn it into four bars. So the drums that we're going to be focusing on right now are the tom drums. So let's see. Uh, let's just play it around on that last bar and see if we can get like something that sounds good. All right, so as you can see, something as simple as two little drums can make the drum break sound that much more better. So let's go ahead and add that. These tactics can be applied to any genre. It can be applied to jazz drums, uh, soulful drums, boom bap, you know, things like keeping in mind the velocity, make sure that you humanize the drums, and to add variation. All those things can be applied throughout different genres of music. So it's really all about how you use the knowledge and how you apply it. So 
hopefully you guys can go ahead and apply a few of these things or all of them to your next beat session and see some improvement. But with all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have a nice day. Peace out.